going to show you how to adjust the handlebar height on your RY10 Elite. So I've started by loosening my bar nuts on the end here, uh, the ones that have the slotted ring in them. They're both fully loose so that I can move my handlebars up and down. I'm going to start by finding the height that I want to have this at. So I'm, I'm around six feet. I kind of want to be right in the middle for height. So I'm going to set it about here. I'm going to keep this supported uh, with my one hand and I'm going to go along the side here and just using my adjustable wrench, just set this so that they stay put just enough that it'll hold it, not fully tight. Now that I've got my nuts set and my height right where I want it, I'm going to go t set the other side. And I'm going to torque these down. That's all there is to adjusting the height. I've got the height where I, where I want it. One cautionary note is understand that every time you change the height on your bars, you're potentially changing the position of your valve control rod. Your valve control rod is linked to the actual valve open and close area right here. Having this rod rest higher can potentially leave your valve partially in the open position depending on where you put your bars. So my suggestion is every time you adjust your bars that you simply check your valve position, make sure that your valve, uh, your valve control is still sitting at 90 degrees and that it's in the full shut position after your adjustment. In this case it is. So in the event that I needed to adjust that, I could just simply adjust the valve length here after I've made my bar adjustments. Today we're going to talk about adjusting your valve control rod. This is a really important part when you're setting up your machine and to maintain your machine ongoing. So the proper length of this control rod ensures that when it's in the resting position, your valve is fully closed. If the control rod is not the right length, your valve may be partially open when your valve control is in the resting position. That'll lead to leakage unnecessarily when the, when the machine's sitting there. So adjusting this control rod is pretty easy. We've got a, a chrome plated uh, adjustment mechanism in the center with threads on both sides. All you're going to do is unlock these two uh, fasteners that are sitting at the end and then you can pivot this clockwise or counterclockwise to either lengthen the rod or narrow the rod depending on what your settings need. Ideally, you want your pin to rest at the furthest position forward. So the way to check that is see where the pin is right now. It's resting right there. I don't want it to rest here or here when my valve's in the resting position. I want it to naturally be at the end point, which is basically 90 degrees to midnight. If your valve is sitting here or here or here, or not at, a, not, not at the furthest point forward, then you're risking um, potentially having leakage. Best way to make sure that you're set up properly is 90 degrees from midnight. So I'm gonna show you how to adjust your valve control tension spring on your RhinoWorks Pro or RhinoWorks Elite. I'm gonna take the pin here and as you can see, we have multiple holes to choose from along the actual control rod to adjust the tension. So for, for less tension or for no tension altogether, I can simply just let go and just put the pin in place so I don't lose it. Or I can simply adjust it to whatever my desired tension is by looking at any of these holes here and simply putting the pin in place where I want it to be. It's simple as that. I'm gonna show you how to remove the pin from your Rhino valve for easy cleaning. So you simply go to the bottom of the valve, remove the pin at the base, and then remove your control rod. Just slides out like that. Next, I'm simply gonna unthread the positioning pin, just like that. And on the inside of my kettle, I'm just gonna push this pin right through. And there you have it. I've got the Rhino valve right out, ready to clean. I could Dremel that in the event that it's a little bit sticky or has any baked on uh, crack fill on it. And if I wanted to take my entire valve off, I have four bolts right here. So I could remove those four bolts, pull the entire mechanism out, and then you could actually clean the in entire inside of that mechanism. To reinstall, I'm just gonna go back into the bottom of my kettle, find the alignment, 
reinstall my pin and then reinstall my control rod. There you have it. You know, in under a minute, you can easily remove the pin and pull out and ready to clean your valve. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to ignite your machine. So we're on an Elite right now. It's pretty simple. I've got my gas cylinder. I've got my Y splitter that runs to my propane torch as well as to my burner. The fuel is full and on, and I've got my regulator that's running right to my actual burner. So counterclockwise on my regulator is off, full clockwise until it won't go anymore is 100%. For igniting, I'm gonna first just start by turning it to 100% pressure. I can always dial it back after. I'm gonna push the burner, push and hold down the burner start button, and then I'm just gonna hit the igniter just like that. I'm gonna to continue to hold the burner start button for about 10 to 15 seconds to allow my flame sensor to read the flame. And then I'm gonna let go and the flame will continue to run now. If the flame doesn't continue to run, you probably haven't held it down long enough. So repeat that process and hold down that igniter until it stays lit. That's it. Now I've got my temperature gauge. I'm just gonna monitor my temperature gauge up until I reach the the right temperature for my material, which is anywhere from 380 to 400 degrees. To turn the machine off or to kill the burner, if your temperature is too high, you have the option of adjusting the temperature down to a lower setting. If you're running, if you're still running too hot or if you're gonna stop using the unit, you can simply just turn off the fuel to the propane cylinder. And if you wait a couple of seconds, it'll starve out the burner and it'll shut off. So I'm gonna show you how to remove the burner on the RA10 Elite. So I'm just simply gonna grab this pin, grab the, the burner lip right here, give it a little bit of a jiggle, and out it comes. You can see everything's nice and self-contained in there. And to be able to put it back in place, I'm just gonna take the edge of the tray, find the tracks that are inside the kettle, and I can see that it's in place. And Slide it in place. And then slide the safety pin in to make sure we hold it in place.